Hey church, we're back. We're going to do 1 Timothy chapter 4. It's such an honor to be able to do these with you. So we're going to get right into it. Let's pray. Holy Ghost, we thank you for being with us in the Word today. This is your book. We trust you to teach us and highlight what you want us to know. Please become our teacher. We love you. Thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name, speak to us right now. Amen. Every time you open the Word, God is opening His mouth. 1 Timothy chapter 4. If you remember where we left off last uh, week, we were talking after chapter 3. And Paul was actually talking about certain positions in the church, overseers, deacons, people that he wanted to be trustworthy. He was speaking about specific things. And now he continues. And he says something so powerful opening up chapter 4. This is so good. And he says, the Spirit clearly says. All right, here we go. This is one of many scriptures we have to talk about and that um, also back up the specific belief. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. All right. So we got to understand something right here. Another version says, depart the faith. Can I just ask you a question? How can you depart something that you were never a part of? How can you abandon something that you were not a part of? You can't, Whenever we see abandon, we're talking about abandoning one's people, abandoning one's family, abandoning something that belonged to you, something that you're a part of, you abandon. So he's talking to believers here, and he's saying that there's going to be, in these end times, these later days, some that will actually, and he gives why. He actually tells you why they're going to depart. Because they're going to follow deceiving spirits. They're going to be deceived. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been deceived? You're a Christian, if you're a believer. Have you ever been deceived by the enemy before? If we were honest, every single one of us would say yes. Have you been deceived by your flesh before? And, and what is deception? Deception means that you believe with all of your heart that something is true when in fact it's totally false, but you believe it completely. You believe with all of your heart that you're in the right when in fact you're completely wrong, but you don't see it. It's a blind spot. You've been deceived. The, the most scary thing a, a, about deception is that it's deceiving. <laughs> the worst part about deception is deception is deceiving. You are fully convinced it's right, but you were wrong. Now, here's the thing, guys. You, because you're a believer, and this is what we have to understand from this, Paul is saying that you cannot, just because you're a believer and you go to church, exclude yourself from deception. You, you, just because you're a believer and you go to church and you even have a Bible does not mean that you're impenetrable from being deceived. Our flesh, the Bible talks about, will constantly, is fighting, Galatians 5, is fighting against the Spirit of God. We live in this body. Even though your old man was crucified, right? Uh, your old man was crucified, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You're now a new creature. That's your past is gone, but you still wake up with your flesh. You still wake up with your old man. You still have to choose every day to crucify that flesh. You have to choose every day to serve God. So listen, it doesn't mean you're impenetrable to deception. All right? The only way you're not deceived is when you're in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit, constant recognition of his word. The truth is ever before your eyes. How many times in the Bible do you read it? it do not let this book of the law depart from your uh, mouth, but d don't let it depart, but meditate on it day and night. Therefore, you'll succeed in everything you're going to do. Psalm chapter one, he who constantly is in the word of God, it said he'll be rooted like a tree by rivers of living water. His leaf will not wither and he will bear fruit in every season he's supposed to bear fruit. You see, there's a constancy, consistency. Jesus says, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word proceeds means continually proceeding. It's got to happen again. You got to hear God's voice today. Hear him again tomorrow. Hear him again the next day. Hear him again all week. It's a constant proceeding. So the only way you will not be deceived is not by being in a church that's powerful. The, it's great, but that's not going to keep you from it. You yourself have to become the church by allowing the word of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit to penetrate you daily. Then you will not be deceived because the one who loves you 
will keep you in the truth. He'll remind you of the truth. You'll have the word in you. You're not going to be caught up by these things. But he's trying to tell you some who are even in the faith, those believers, not people who didn't believe and we weren't even sure if they really believed. No, that's not what he's saying. Some will abandon the faith. Believers, they're going to be deceived. Okay, this is really important we understand this. And they'll be deceived, and those deceptions, these things are things taught by demons. There are so many beliefs, guys, that we could talk about right now. Think about so many beliefs that are even sometimes being taught in the church, right? We could think of some obvious ones. Think about some obvious beliefs that can take people off course that are being presented in the church right now. How about this belief? How about just the common belief of everybody's truth is okay. That's in some churches right now. It's not that the word of God is the, uh, is the overarching defining truth. There's actually a type of Christianity called progressive Christianity. Progressive Christianity is the kind of Christianity that says that God is gray. God is not black and white. God is gray. The, you know, you can read the word, but you know, if that's not, it doesn't apply to you anymore. You know, this was thousands of years ago, you know, when this was written and, you know, uh, the way that I live my life, I don't necessarily like the way that was said. You know, I don't feel that way anymore. So, you know what? Okay. If you don't feel that way, then fine. It's good for you. All right. Yeah. Your truth is okay. You know, my truth, your truth, you know, I just don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want you to feel like you're not accepted. You see, the worst thing that's in progressive Christianity, this is a type of Christianity that's permeating many places right now. It's a humongous doctrine of demons. And the number one thing of it is this, that they do not want you to feel unaccepted. So in other words, you could still be living lies, saying things that are hurting you, but for the sake that we don't make you feel unaccepted, we will not uh, confront it. Not with our own opinions, but confront it with the Bible, just the truth. Dangerous. This is one of these things taught by demons. And if people who are actual believers will be in the church, it's already happening. We've seen people will literally abandon their faith for a thing they're still calling the faith. But it's not the true faith anymore. They left their first love. They left their first love. Remember what Revelation says? He's, a, he's, he's talking to the churches and he says, I have one thing against you. You have abandoned and left your first love. You're doing things, but you've abandoned me. You got to know me. You're following these other things. Remember later on, it talks about, Paul's writing this as well. He said that there's going to be a kind of godliness in the end. It's a type of godliness, a form of it, but denying the power that could actually change and set them free. In other words, they're going to have the look of Christianity, but they're going to have abandoned or denied the power of Jesus, the truth that will convict them and set them free and actually help them to live free, free lives. So listen, guys, we have to be aware of this. You are not above deception just because you call yourself a Christian. Okay? You have to be found in the Word of God. You have to be close to Jesus. Take that as a great warning, but also a great encouragement if you're in the truth right now. Keep on going. Stay strong. Don't grow weary in doing good. Such teachings, verse 2, come through hypocriti hypocritical liars whose consciences, these are the kind of people that are going to say this. Wow. Wow. These people whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. So how do you have a conscience? We know what our conscience is. Our conscience, right, is part of our spirit. Our spirit is three parts. Our body's three parts. Our soul is three parts. Our spirit is three parts. Our spirit is our conscience, our intuition, and our communion, or our wisdom. Our conscience, our intuition, and our wisdom. That is what comes from our spirit, okay? Our conscience, therefore, is where the Spirit of God speaks through. It tells us what's right and wrong, right? In your conscience, even people who aren't saved have a conscience. They know what's right or wrong. So here's what he's saying. He's saying you can listen to God's voice. You can hear what is right, but you can ignore it enough times that what happens is that sin or that darkness by disobedience or whatever it is that you're believing, that deception permeates you, and it literally, like a hot iron, will sear your skin. What happens when you do that? You hit the nerves. It, you can, right now, if you hit me with a hot iron and I put my, if I put my hand on a hot stove, I would scream. I would scream because I would feel, all my nerves in my hand would be feeling that. But if it goes deep enough, and if I did it enough times, I would be in pain for many, many times, but eventually it would scowl over and, the, and I would not feel the pain anymore because my nerves would have been burned off. That's what he's saying. He's saying that after you do it enough times, you ignore his voice enough times, you're going to be in a place where you might even call darkness light. 
light darkness. We're seeing it happen all around us, y'all, not just in the world, but even in the church. We're calling darkness light. We don't know the difference anymore between this is wrong and this is right. This is so crucial that you know that you have to be in the presence of the Lord and in God's word. Stay consistent. Don't do it out of fear, but do it out of the warning from the word of God. This is wisdom coming towards you. We have to know we need the Lord as much today, if not more than we needed him yesterday. Stay humble. Stay on your knees. I'll say this last thing. Uh, it says in verse 7, Have nothing to do with godless myths or old wives' tales. Rather, here we go, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, and it is of some value. I've had friends, great preachers, that have died before their time because they wouldn't take over their diets and they wouldn't exercise. They needed to live many more years ministering, blessing people, their families, but they died before their time because they would not exercise and they wouldn't stay in shape. For physical training is of some value. Paul said it does have value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So I just want to highlight that one thing, and then I'll say this, that one line that says, train yourself to be godly. Listen, you have to submit yourself to the training of the Holy Spirit. You're the one who enrolls. You're the one who signs up for the classes. You're the one who drives to get to the classes. You're the one who shows up. You're the one who has to take notes. You're the one who has to do the homework. You're the one who determines how much of this thing called Christianity and godliness you get. Train yourself to be godly. How do we do that? We become students of his word and we become students of his voice. I'm going to say that one last time. To train yourself to be godly, you become students of his word and students of his voice. But it's your choice. He will not force you to come to the classroom. He loves you. He has more in store for you than you could ever imagine. The best truly is yet to come for somebody who makes himself a student. Train yourself. You can be as godly as you want. Can I say that to you? There is nothing beyond your desire. You could have whatever level of faith you want, godliness you want, power, anointing, all of it is there for you. It's just simply what's the price you're willing to pay to train I love it how he talked about athletes and he talks about physical training. You see, there are, there are people who train in athletics and they're great in high school. But they get to college and they're nothing in college compared to those people. Why? Because it's a different level of commitment and training to be that good. And then there's people in college that are like really amazing. But then you get into the pros and a lot of those people in college won't make it in the pros. Why? Because there's a different level of commitment and training that's required to be a pro. And then there's people who are pros. And then you go to the Olympics. And when you get to the Olympics, you don't just have the greatest in your state, the greatest in your nation. You're going against the greatest of all over the world. And the person who wins the gold medal, I promise you'll never find any other situation. That person, if you look at their lifestyle, they have given their life to training toward dedication, toward suffering through pain, to pay the price to be great. It's the exact same thing with God. God said, I paid a price to give you everything. Now I'm asking you to lay down your life, pay a price to pick everything I gave you, pick it up and not leave any potential here on earth. God bless you today. I pray that you're really blessed by this. Please consider what I've said. Have a great time all week long in the presence of Jesus. The best is yet to come. Love you.